We know about sardines, mackerel, bully beef, chicken foot, chicken neck, chicken back. Nothing a waste, nothing a dash way. Wagwan, wagwan, what's great? Chef here, John Morris again, man, saying Merry Christmas when it comes, a happy and prosperous new year for you and yours. Right now, you know what time it is. I want to show you how I prepare my Jamaican black cake, fruit cake, and what some of us may call it Christmas cake. We're all talking about the same thing. So without further delay, I'm going to take you right into this video. But hold on, I'm going to delay a bit. Have you subscribed as yet? Hit that subscribe button because we're down to about 78 videos as we speak with nothing but goodness. So subscribe for all the best Jamaican, Caribbean and international food. And this is what the cake should look like when you bake it. So I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful Jamaican Christmas cake. Forward, let me show you what I want. So we're going to start off by creaming together our sugar and our butter, right? A good way to have your butter creamed out properly is to take this out overnight and as you can see it's pretty soft so this is at room temperature so the packages that we took the butter from do not throw those away we're gonna use them later on to grease our baking tins alright so we're gonna soften the butter first before we add our sugar so now we're gonna add our sugar because the butter is a bit beaten and we're using pure brown sugar here. We're gonna cream this until the butter and sugar becomes fluffy. We'll start off at low speed and gradually increase the speed. Reason being, we don't want this to splash all over the place. So while that is going, we're gonna grease our baking tin. So remember those pockets that we got the butter from? Come in handy, we're just gonna rub that right over. So you don't have to use anything extra. So you ensure that you coat that right around properly. So you need some grease paper or wax paper. And you just cut. So we just want to stop that for a second. And scrape the side of your bowl down. Because you realize we still have sugar that's not incorporated as yet. So we just want to fold this. Like that in half and right at the end that we fold we're gonna cut that in half and we'll just put a few slices down at the end go quarter away we're gonna put the sides on first so these now are what gonna help to stick that to the end go like this and we'll bring that right around so at the end of the paper here we'll just add a bit of butter to that at both ends so that this piece sticks easily and then we're going to put the bottom in and that is how you line your baking tray so this is what you're looking for so you see how that butter and sugar transform beautifully it's almost like icing, basically, but with brown sugar. Normally we use lime zest for this recipe, but if you have lemon zest, that's perfectly fine as well. Just ensure that you get some zest, right? We're going to use the smallest part of your grater, or if you have a zester, that's perfectly fine. So we do that directly into the eggs, and what this does is to add flavor to the egg, as well as to cut away the rawness, so that the cake doesn't taste raw. Because if you have this much eggs in a cake, you're guaranteed that it's going to taste a bit raw. We're going to lightly beat this before we add it to the cream, to butter and sugar. Like that. So that's perfect. So at this point you want to turn on your oven to preheat at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Gradually add your eggs into your creamed mixture and fold it in well. And the reason why you gradually add it because you don't want the mixture to curdle, right? So you add it, fold it in properly and then add. So we're going to add this about 5 to 6 times. So we're starting off here at very low speed again just to prevent splashing. So about quarter cup. So 
we're going to gradually add to this our browning you can also use burnt sugar and browning is called caramel so we're just going to add that to give it that black cake look okay so now this is done so our mixture curdled just a little bit but it's fine all right so we're just going to set this aside and then we're going to go over to our dry ingredients if your mixture curdles that doesn't mean your cake is spoiled it's still good to go so I'm going to sift my flour to that I'm going to add cinnamon powder so we're going to use allspice or mixed spice so the allspice is contained of nutmeg, cinnamon and cloves but we use the allspice because we want that clove flavor in our cake even though we have a repeat of the cinnamon and the nutmeg we're going to go into our baking powder and salt we're just going to sift this just to remove the lumps from the flour as well as to get it light and airy. So our pot was too small to add it in. I don't have a big enough bowl to do that. If you have a big enough bowl, you don't have to constantly be transferring. You need to mix this to incorporate all these ingredients together. I'm going to add to a separate bowl the mixed fruits. And I have a video up on how to prepare the mixed fruits for this cake. So you can click that link above and it take you right over there. Scrape all of that out because that waste said nothing now waste. You know the rest going up. We're going to add to our fruit mix some rose water and vanilla. Just going to mix that in. Wow, the flavor burst that just hit me. Unreal. So something I should have mentioned to you earlier as soon as you get your oven preheated what you can do is set your kettle on to boil some water because we're going to set a water bath in the oven and what this does is to prevent the cake from drying out quickly and also burning so you just get that water bath on the lower rack and then your cake above it we're just going to add that right into the fruits just going to mix those in fully incorporate that with the fruits if you have a big enough KitchenAid mixer you don't have to do this transfer process you can just add your fruits in your mixer but because I don't have a big enough mixer for that I'm just finishing it off old school style you know then for the finale we're gonna go in with our dry ingredients gonna gradually add this and fold it in and ensure not to over mix this as soon as everything is folding you're good to go circular motion in circular motion in soon as all the flour dissolve, add a bit more so we'll add this in about portions of four this is not up to the color that I want it's gonna add a bit more brown into that you can also use a whisk if you don't have a wooden spoon so there you have it we don't want to over mix this and the batter should be this thick so you're good to go we're gonna add that straight into our prepared baking tray Tap that down on the counter to get everything leveled and to remove whatever air bubbles may be underneath. This should yield you a 12 inch cake but I went in with a 10 inch pan right and I have a bit over so I'm going to add the remainder in cupcake form. This cupcake size will bake for about 25 to 30 minutes and this 10 inch cake will bake for an hour and 30 minutes. So after an hour and 30 minutes, I'll show you what it looks like. So forward, let me show you what I'm going. Right, so here we have our water bath. And we're just going to set our cake right above that. And this prevents it from drying out. So now it's time to remove our cake from the oven. We're going to get a knife and you insert that in the very center of the cake. And you pull that out. And look at that. If your knife comes out clean, you're ready to go. If not, you pop that back in the oven for an additional five minutes and you monitor it so it doesn't burn so in this bottle I have some white rum, red label wine and fruit wine and this is what we're going to use to spray on our cake to get it moistened you're just going to spray it on your cake while it's hot so that the cake absorbs the alcohol so this is the exact size that I baked prior to this one and this is what your cake should look like when it's done I already sprayed my alcohol, you see it looking moist and this was baked two days ago so you know this is well infused with alcohol just gonna cut into that to show you what it looks like cut so nicely that is what you're looking for decadent rich 
firm and moist. And there you have it, Christmas cake made easy here on Morris Time Cooking Ed. Once again, thank you very much for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos like these. Until next time, Merry Christmas again and a Happy New Year when it comes. See you travel on the gravel and go and dig up on yourself. Yeah, me see you another dinner for later. Me know you fast, girl, you never tell me. Cause I know any, any man can feed you. So that's why I always take me to the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah.